This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, live from Harlem in New York, it's Alex, that's me and the Ramble. And we go until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the west coast of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Everybody loves him. Yay! Yeah, I'm still... <laughs> Yes, we're, I don't know, you know, I guess we're drowning in variant virus out here. I don't know if it's in New York yet or not. Are you? We're, we're drowning in incredible heat here. Uh, although, uh, uh, by the time this is broadcast, maybe the heat will have subsided and uh, uh, COVID will have cured itself in California. Yes, I wish it would go away. I don't think it's ever going to. I'm very kind of worried about it. Yeah. Have you had your shot yet? Just the one, but apparently that's not going to be enough. Right? Well, so. well, you're, you've had the one, so go back and get the second when it's time. Which one did you get? No, I got the, the J&J. is only supposed to be one shot. No, oh, okay. Well, you know, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it affords you protection, so that's what matters. But when did you get it? Uh, a couple months ago. Oh, really? Oh, you did get it. Okay. See, I'm trying to keep up with who got it and who didn't get it. And I have certain people that I think the world of who just haven't gotten it. Uh, Pearl hasn't gotten his yet. Wow, okay. Yeah, well, so okay, so uh, I'm making plans for the funeral. And, uh, <laughs> well, let's hope not. It's... Let's hope not, you know. But, you know, I'm one of these people, I learned long ago that I'm a control freak and that I always assume the worst is going to happen. Uh, that, that's my view, yeah. Yeah, that's your view. And what we are is we are control freaks. That what we do is we prepare for the worst so when it happens we aren't surprised. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's uh, the way everyone should operate. Uh, Spalding Gray told me that because I was having a discussion with him once on the show. He wrote Swimming to Cambodia in case people don't know what we're talking about uh and he didn't swim to cambodia by the way um but he um he did monologues and and he came on my show and we were talking and i said you know i said i'm uh, every time i go on a trip before i go on the trip i think of everything that could go wrong with the trip and i let it drive me crazy and he says i'm the same way and he said you know why we do that and i said no he said we're control freaks we want to look for every possible thing that can go wrong so when it does, it's no surprise to us. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So he told me that, and you would have thought, now that I knew why I did that, I would get over it. No way, didn't get over it. No. Because before I... expect the worst, you're never disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before I go on a vacation... Uh, anybody who was going on the vacation with me had to put up with my nuttiness. I was just crazy. I was nuts. <laughs> and the day before, forget it. I wasn't going. Uh, I lost a wallet or I did something that, like, made life miserable. Uh, so I, you, you never want to go on a vacation with me or prepare to go on a vacation with me. Yeah, I, I've never been. Travel is... Uh always a nightmare well if you go you know something if you're going somewhere you want to go right you're going on uh, let's say i'm going to europe i don't mind spending that time on a plane you know because when i get there i'm going to be there for a couple of weeks but when i'm going somewhere and it's just overnight that's just drives me nuts you know and that probably would drive you nuts because well you do you take airplanes i forget now yeah, I'm, I don't have a fear of flying anymore. I have a fear of 
crashing. It's, it's, it's going. It's getting <laughs> to the airport. It's going to the security lines. The planes are crowded. That's what I hate. But, it know, used to a, be. If I had a private jet, life would be sweet. Well, well, let's get you rich enough to get a private jet. <laughs> Uh, you have to be more than an opening act, though, for you to have a private yeah. jet. <laughs> <laughs> the private jet costs, those are, wow, that's a lot of money. Middle act, maybe you can get first class, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or a Cessna, I don't know. Hey, I'm coughing today. It's uh, allergies, I think. Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, do you remember the time, I mean, I love talking about this, that when I was a boy and when you were a boy, Traveling by plane was this exquisite excursion. You got all dressed up for it. Well, people wore suits. People wore suits on the plane. Uh, the, the the service was exquisite, right? Yeah. Now it's like herding cattle. It's a flying greyhound. Well, it's an attitude of fuck you and the bus you came in on. You know? Yeah. I mean, they just... It, it's just gone, to pe- and anybody who's just flown in recent years and only learned to fly in recent years just thinks of it as this horrid event that you have to go through. But in the old days, oh, man, I mean, you had the, you had the stewardesses. We didn't even have guys in that job, okay? We had the stewardesses, and they were serving food, and the food was good. You know, the, the seats were comfy. There was lots of leg room. Uh, now you're cramped into where your knees are up around your chin. Yeah, and I think those overcrowded planes, uh, that's a real safety hazard, cramming people in there if there is an emergency, you know. Well, they're trying to see how many people they can get on the plane. Yeah, that's reason. You know. Yeah, profit. Yeah. yeah, but anyway. so Profit over people. So <laughs> you never had fear of flying. I, I always thought you did. No, I, I did have a fear of flying. I've kind of gotten over it. But, yeah, uh, yeah. What do you mean, you kind of gotten over it? You still have a fear of it? I think it's less fear of dying than when I was younger. But uh, I used to, when, in the 80s, when I was traveling a lot, every time I had, talk about freaking out, uh, every every trip, I was absolutely convinced I was going to die in an air crash. Totally convinced. Yeah. Well, because, you know, you're doing something which man is not meant to do. Okay? Which is fly. And so you're doing yeah. an unnatural act. So that, I think, is what worries you, is you're fighting nature. And and uh, you figure nature is going to win in the end. And, you know, it's only a matter of gravity before you're dead in one of those things. Yeah. You know, uh, I often used to like to joke that uh, don't worry about it. Nobody crashes on taking off. <laughs> Well, that's true. Uh, I remember, 87% of crashes take place during landing. I remember you used to have a favorite book about this, didn't you? The Black you know, the black Box. The Black Box. And it was and we, a whole, whole book of what? Black Box recordings? They were transcripts of uh, of air crashes, yeah. And uh-huh. we, we actually we read them on the air one day on your show, yeah, remember? And, and, <laughs> and every one of them ends exactly the same way. Sound of impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were horrifying, and uh, but uh, <laughs> we remember we were acting them out. You be the you be the co-pilot. I'll be the pilot. Okay. <laughs> well, we were reading the dialogue. <laughs> I never won. I always wondered why they had the uh, the uh, black box. You know, I mean, after all, once it's crashed, what do you need? What answers do you need? You know? Well, they want to see if it's, they can prevent that from happening again. So. Well, yeah, but most of the time you can't tell that from the black box. You can tell that from inspecting the plane and it had a bad strut or something like that. You know, But, you know, we don't have that many plane crashes. That's the other thing. Compared to all the flights that go out every year, uh, the amount of... I don't think we've had a plane crash yet in the last couple of years, have we? Uh, the United States, I think the last major one we had, there was one about two months after 9-11 in, in New York. Yeah. It was American Airlines, and that, I think, was the last major crash we've had, so that was almost 20 years ago. Really? So, it yeah. re- really, well, you, gee, you know something? I can't, you're right. I can't remember any major crashes. So, your chances of surviving uh, a plane flight are pretty damn good. 
you know. Uh, oh yeah, the, the versus driving, yeah, it's we, much yeah. safer. I'm surprised you don't have the statistics on that. You know. Yeah. But you do remember plane crashes, so that's good. So uh, yeah, that was a bad. How's life been for Larry Bubbles Brown? Well, no plane crashes, so life's good. Yeah, right. And you got the you got the shot, so you're you're you know you feel a certain safety, a certain. I did have since we last talked. I, we we always talk about our allergy. I had an allergy attack. I thought I had COVID. I was on the floor for two hours. I couldn't move. I was just so tired, and then I. I had this for days. I had this nonstop sneezing, just violent. Wow! I finally got some Claritin. That actually stopped it, but that was just—it was not ending. It was crazy. Well, we have some ba- you know bad allergies going on, and uh, I uh, I always am, am you know it's a big deal for me because I've always been highly allergic to pollen and things like that. Your whole life? Yeah, I remember we mar- okay. we moved to Marin County. And the acacia trees would come into bloom every year, and you could hear me coming a mile away by my wheeze. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, it was terrible. Uh, and uh, uh, I still have it. I mean, I think I have it today. And I, I've been very tired recently, and I think it's more pollen than anything else. Although. Yeah, but these allergies make you exhausted. Well, you know what happens also? My wife, uh, and this is really. I don't know, idiotic. She loves to keep the windows open in the apartment. She says, I need the fresh air. But you know what comes in through those windows? Pollen. Pollen. Pollen, yeah. And also on a hot day today, it's it's going to be up around 95. On a hot day like today, keep the windows shut. Don't open them because the heat can then come in. You know, so I, I I I always told her, you know, the reason we have so many allergy problems is because you don't keep the windows closed, you keep them open, and you allow all that pollen to get in. But she won't so, listen to me, you know. So where does the pollen come from in New York? There's not a lot. Oh, Central we, Park? we listen. I just it, I, I'm I'm six blocks away from Central Park. I'm okay. three two blocks three blocks away from uh, another park up here uh, that's up near Columbia. Uh, you know, and then there are trees lining the streets. So, I mean, when when uh, summer comes or spring comes, you f- see all this uh, pollen on the ground. I mean, it's just p- profuse. Uh, so, I saw, there's a picture on the internet of a car hitting a tree, and it's the amount of pollen that yes. falls out. Is, it's unbelievable. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it looks like this green storm. <laughs> And I wouldn't be surprised if pollen is more excessive now because of global warming. I mean, I don't know that that isn't just another effect of global warming. Um, but, I mean, it, we, we, uh, we get very, uh, like pollen today, 7.1 is the number. I, I get a little thing every day that tells me, you know, how bad the pollen is today. And sometimes that doesn't bother me when it's high, and sometimes it does bother me when I'm high. And I've been told it's because you have an al- allergy to different pollens. And just oh, because okay. today, you know, you may be ragweed, and ragweed, ragweed is low today, or ragweed is high. So, you know. And I don't know what I'm allergic to. I have no idea. And I don't want to find out. It's too late. I'm 81. I don't need to know. <laughs> Just as long as I know it's not COVID, which is what you saw was a problem. Yeah, I thought, wow, well, how is yours? But I didn't have a... It, it, I think, it, what's the first sign, a fever? Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, you know what I do? I've got one of these little uh, uh, guns, you know, fever guns, right? And I just, I, yeah. took, I took my temperature 20 times a day during COVID. I mean, I, I, I thought any little sniffle I had or sneeze I had or whatever... Uh, well, uh, next thing, get me to the hospital. I'm dying, you know. And uh, yeah. it, I talked to a guy uh, last night on the program. Of course, it's many days away from that now. But he uh, he got it towards the beginning, and he was in the hospital for three months and intubated for 21. Jesus, really? And he said to this day, I mean, this is a year later, he's not over it. He still has effects, you know, memory loss, things like that. So this 
a disease doesn't just attack you and do what it's going to do and then you get over it. It has long-term effects. It's crazy. It's nuts. Well, that's amazing. He survived that. Jesus. Boy, those Chinese really whooped up something in that Wuhan lab, didn't they? Yeah, we got to <laughs> sue them. <laughs> I don't believe that crap. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you can't you can't start a uh, take a uh, uh, flu or whatever or disease and then specifically aim it at your enemy you know without you perhaps getting it as well because it's spread throughout the whole world so anyway I mean who knows where it came from and I don't care I just don't want to get it and I don't want you to get it and I don't want uh, Stephen Pearl to get it you know uh, well, he's probably got a strong immune system no he ha- well maybe it has to get through all that pot before <laughs> you know it can grab hold of him entirely you know but anyway, hey, it's good talking to you again, Larry yeah, sure. Bubbles Brown. Let's, well, let's stay healthy. I'm uh, getting worried. Uh, you're getting worried. Don't get worried. You're healthy. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we, uh, here we go, uh, last show of the week. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's see here. Uh, nothing to tell you about particularly. Uh, let me just uh, do a few things here that i got to do here to make things right. Oh, we got somebody coming in here that, uh, that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, so Monday I find out, we find out whether I, I get inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame, which I don't think is going to happen. I, I, I definitely think it's going to be Sally Jesse, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I think it's time, because I really want to get to this panel, because i got a couple people here, at least one person here that I haven't seen in a long time, and uh, so I would like to uh, be able to see all of them. Uh, and uh, here we go. Let's see here. There we go. And are we, uh, and uh, let me see here. Let me admit another person here. Hey, Ross, how are you? Hello. Oh, Ross is still trying to connect his audio. Connect your audio. Connect. He's in Australia. Ah, you see, Jeff, you can go, hey, uh, turn. Yeah, you, you've got your audio up. Uh, there we go. Hi, Ross. Hi. Hi. How you doing? How's I'm that? I'm doing okay. And Josh Wheeler's here. Boy, what a nice group of people I got right immediately. Uh, Ross is in uh, in uh, in uh, Australia. Where again in Australia? Yeah, in Canberra. In Canberra. And uh, uh, how's everything going in that part of the world? Took eighteen months. We're finally in lockdown. You're fi- You're in now. You. It got that bad. After five cases. Five cases. It's it's all Delta. But uh, it's all um, it's all. But wait a minute! Only five cases in the whole country? No, in just in the territory. This oh, in is where the territory. I am. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. The state that surrounds us has four hundred and sixty. Yeah. I think there's closer to some of something like six hundred cases active at the moment. Oh wow! Wow. Hang on. Hang yeah. On. Wait. What are you trying to do? Get it, fix something? How many total active cases in Australia? I didn't want to. Give you the wrong number. Uh, if you give, oh, you didn't want to give me the wrong number. How many? Yeah. Uh, so how how well is the whole country doing? Uh, we're doing okay. There's apparently six thousand active cases in okay. the country. All right. And four hundred and eleven acquired in the last twenty four hours. All right. All right. Well, uh, there's a place in the world I don't think that has been affected by this. So, you know, it's kind of sad. Um, yeah. Uh, what, 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 Phil, right? Switch the camera to panel. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. I do this sometimes, and I don't know why I do it. There we go. There's the panel. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so out of it these days. I'm, I, I had the camera on me and not on you guys. Um, 
but you can see there that's that's uh, that's Ross. You you used to use another name, however. Yes. Yeah. I, Did you prefer to use that name? Yeah, I do. The, I, um, I'm kind of ambivalent at this point. Yeah, because it says Ross Manual on the yeah. on the thing there, so we'll call you Ross. What the hell? Yeah, that works. Uh, so how's married life doing for you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, you, you, you seem to have a you seem to be rest, uh, kind of hesitant in answering that question. No, I'm doing so good. Um, married life is still pretty good. Um, we've been married for four years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it getting any easier? Or is it getting harder? Oh, we'd already been together for like ten years before that point. Okay, so you know knew what to expect. Yeah. Okay, good. And do you have a kid now too? Yeah, yeah. One, well, Marcus, he's 19 months old. Mm -hmm. How's that? We've got another one due in a couple of weeks. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you little devil, you. Uh, good. That's terrific. That's wonderful. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Hello, Josh Wheeler. How are you this evening? Doing good. How are you doing? Good. Anything on your mind you want to talk about? I don't know. You know, the big story outside of the normal stuff is, uh, you know, everybody's talking about this deal in Afghanistan, the troop withdrawal. I think that's turned into a cluster. Kind of a, kind of a mess, you know, a little yeah. bit of a shame, but. Well, we knew I mean, that look. we knew that was going to happen, didn't we? Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's been a little bit more serious than maybe some people thought it would be or I don't know maybe they actually did know it was going to be like that and you know they didn't tell anybody or they didn't care but I think it's been faster than people thought and it's been to a larger degree than people thought you know mm -hmm. I mean I don't know it's basically I mean if it's going to turn out like this then we should have just done it <laughs> You know, well, I mean, ten, ten years ago, I yeah, guess. I mean, it, it, it didn't. I think well, this was going to happen at any time we got out of there. But I think so too. But how long do we stay in there? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we say we're done, you know, but, um, you know, I don't think he's going to change. I don't think Biden is President Biden's going to change his mind about that. Yeah. You know, at least it doesn't appear so. I think we're going to leave and we're going to be done. You know, I know they sent some troops back in basically to just help evacuate the embassy and stuff like that you but mean, i mean it looks like we're done we're gonna leave you know and uh you know what the, i don't get mm -hmm. these people the taliban are so terrible mm -hmm. i mean they're going into villages now and just killing people right well that's what they do Th they that's do. what they do uh you would think that people that were this evil and this horrible there'd be an uprising against them but nobody seems to rise up against them well i mean i think that's you know, the point that I was going to get to was that's, that's the thing is, I mean, we were either going to have to stay forever or do what we're going to do. I mean, look, if, if the Afghan people want the Taliban out of Afghanistan, they're, they're going to have to do it themselves. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's a harsh statement because that's going to, that's going to be bad for a lot of people. I mean, you know, they're going to do a lot of damage. Yep. Even if they get defeated, but we we apparently defeated them, you know, a decade ago. Remember, you know, yep. but apparently we didn't. Well, so they're never going to be eradicated there until it's done from the ground up. The Afghans. Were. Well, the point is that they yeah. are a religious. Like they are a religious entity, and right. the, the, and those people are crazy, you know. Uh, yeah. And and um, that being the case, you know, what are you going to do about it? I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to stay there forever? Well, the issue is, though, is the Taliban isn't so much a religious entity as just they're a political entity. But they're religious, uh, too. Their whole, their whole the basis of how they feel about things is religious. Hmm, you the, yeah, I mean, I, I was talking to my, my boss, who was the you know, former ambassador to Afghanistan. Yeah. And he's saying it's like um, you can't. The problem with the Taliban is you each there's there's like the, there are you know, moderate Republicans and extreme Republicans and moderate Democrats and extreme Democrats. Yeah. There are moderate Taliban and extreme Taliban, and the problem is is that from the Western world, this counterinsurgency campaign that we looked at for Afghanistan, 
it was exactly the same problems that we looked at in Vietnam. Is we saw these things as a this is a military operation, but a counterinsurgency is a political uh, issue with a military component. And the problem is, is that while you know it's great for us to come in and get rid of the the Taliban, we didn't actually. It took a long time for us to realize um, the, what do the locals actually want. Like where a lot of time we're coming, it's like, okay, we're going to build you some infrastructure. We'll build you rain irrigation and whatever. Yeah. And they're like, we don't want that. We don't need that. And if we, and if the local fighters see us with that, they're going to kill us. Yeah. And that's the problem is that they're, they're, they're terrified of, you know, they were terrified of working with us to try and resolve the problem. Because if there was one extreme, extremist or insurgent fighter in that town who yeah. saw them working with coalition troops, it's going to be very much like, yeah, I'm going to kill you and kill everyone in your family. So now when you, when you hear it now what's happening through is they go through these areas and they're getting rid of and killing all of these people. It's entirely because of they saw we they were benefiting from our assistance. Yeah. And we were never going to take complete control. Uh, same thing with, with Vietnam. You know, we were never going to win a military campaign well, uh, again, in a country. Uh, it, it's very uh, we learned a lot from Vietnam. What we learned mm-hmm. was you don't get into a war that you can't get out of. You know, and we got into a war that we couldn't get out of. And so finally, I think uh, 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 Nixon came up with the best idea. Let's just leave and say we won. Yeah, and Afghanistan history will say the same thing. You look at, there are a lot of parallels between Afghanistan and Vietnam that people, I think, in in military and government eyes don't want to acknowledge. They are both countries that their culture is built around foreign powers coming in trying to invade right, them right for the chinese for the, for the vietnam it was chinese and the koreans and the laotians and the cambodians well in fact it wasn't was everyone yeah, else it wasn't just the chinese i mean in vietnam they had a history of for several hundred years of one country or another occupying them and taking mm. them over you had the french in there for a while you had the chinese mm. in there for a while and when we came in, they didn't see any difference between us and the rest of them. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. because that's because, and this is the same thing in Afghanistan. You also had a third component of a quasi civil war between factions within that country. In other words, there are people in Afghanistan who are Afghani who support the Taliban. There are some who do not. Similar to the fact that in Vietnam, you know, you did have some people who wanted to ally themselves with certain other factions, wanted Vietnamese independence, wanted, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there was a bit of a North Vietnam versus South Vietnam, communist rule, democracy. You know, there there was a bit of a civil war going on between that. So we were sort of players in a game where it wasn't, you know, two teams, you know, and uh, Afghanistan is similar. I, you know, I don't know that they're the same, but you know, I don't, there's not exactly two teams in Afghanistan either. I mean, the, I don't know that the Afghanis even know what they want, you know, as a whole. I mean, maybe they do, and I just don't understand it, but, you know, they don't, they don't seem to have agreement. I mean, they obviously have some support for the Taliban in Afghanistan, you know, because they appear to be doing well. Yeah. The other issue with the Afghan population is it is, it is a relatively younger population than the rest of the world you know they skew a lot younger because they have been constantly you know in a, in a state of violence from foreign aggressors and what we've ever seen as foreign aggressors for since the 40s since uh, even before then the just you know the dissolution of the british empire the dissolution of the soviet union um you know the napoleon alexander the great mm-hmm. you know th- this is a culture where we're brought out is like if you're not afghan we can't trust you and we can't fix that problem unless we, you know, we had to empower. We had to, we had to empower the Afghans mm-hmm. to want to change. But I think the overriding response we did, and we did it in Iraq as well, was we can't trust the locals. So we're going to force them all have to work together. You know, well, the Afghan National Army, they were grabbing people from all over the place, and you know, you end up with like, you're great. Um, I'm a Sunni, and I'm I'm up from Kandahar. You know, why am I in Uruzgan Province? I have no connection here. It'd be like, you know, in the United States, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you're from Massachusetts. Great. You know, you're going to Kentucky and you're going to do peacekeeping operations there. But you have zero connection to country, the country there. And you have no connection to any of the local customs. You don't even speak the same language. Well, is it a certain naive quality on our part that we think that we go in and we help people and immediately they're going to warm themselves to us? 
and think we're hmm. wonderful, and we're really not. They just figure they were trying to buy them off. Yeah. There's a certain you know, cultural and racial bias associated with that too. Mm-hmm. Like that works in Europe because we all have a sh- shared heritage. But when did then we project that onto other well, cultures? Well, we, we, we go in with an attitude that we understand this situation, that we understand what you're all about, and we don't understand anything, really, yeah. truthfully, you know. So, anyway. Yeah, I mean, look, the, you know, the, the Army has a, you know, uh, uh, a handbook, basically, for, you know, guerrilla warfare and, you know, these types of things and you know i've read it we were made to read it do you know for military historian training and stuff like that and i mean you know they have a lot of great ideas and a lot of grip on it but the problem with it is is you know counterinsurgency is it's all different you know i mean it's Mm -hmm. it's it's there's no two that are the same it's not it's not traditional warfare i mean it's it's no different than uh you know it's, it's 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 like the French and Indian War, for example, you know, here in North America, we have, you know, dozens of different tribes of American Indians, all choosing different sides, uh, a totally new type of warfare that neither, I mean, you know, I'm just saying yeah, all these but, complicated yeah, but you know, factors, it, the, the thing that, the thing that bothers me with all of this is, is that for the women in that country, it's back to burkas again. Well, it's going to be you, terrible. You, you yeah, know, it's and be, it's back to not being taught in schools, and it's going to be back to the kind of sexist uh, Islamic uh, ideology, at least of that part of the world, uh, that uh, that is going to make it horrible for women. Uh, and uh, for the last, what, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years we've been there, right? At least they've known a certain semblance of order that way. They've gotten educated, they, they've gotten uh, to be themselves, you know, the burqas kind of went out of style, and now here we are again. Uh, mm-hmm. Right, because we've we've propped up, you know, a false sense of security that they could have. That, but but the the basis for it apparently, you know, was never really there. I mean, it's like uh, you know, it's like Reconstruction here, you know, that collapsed as soon as we pulled the troops out of the South. Right? I mean, it's a very similar set of circumstances, and you're going to probably see a really similar result and now we only managed to solve the problems from the failures of reconstruction Mm -hmm. after decades and a lot more bloodshed but it had to come from within right no one came here and helped us solve those problems you know dozens of i'm sorry tens of thousands of you know blacks in this country you Mm -hmm. know had to have these ground up movements so i mean it's i'm not equating any of this i'm just saying there are things you know that can kind of teach you lessons from it and i just see it you know kind of in a similar in a a similar light you know and i don't know what what's going to happen but it's going to be ugly for a while that's for sure yeah it's going to be very ugly by the way we've been joined by someone else who we don't see all that often patrick blazik is with us hello patrick hi (laughs) hi how you doing tonight? I'm not dead, so that's probably good. <laughs> you're not. You're above. You're above room temperature, right? Yeah. 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 Have you been paying attention at all to this whole thing going on in Afghanistan, or is it not something that floats your boat? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I think. It could have been planned a little better to withdraw, mm-hmm. but I mean, I've I've been of the opinion for years that how long were we going to be there? Yeah, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know that full withdrawal is the way to go because we always knew the Taliban could retake as well as ISIS and reestablish a caliphate. So, um, you know, I. I've always thought this small contingency that we've had there now, the last several years, a mm-hmm. couple hundred uh, troops on an air base, I think was a smart thing and would still be a smart thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm not the president, so. Well, no, you're not. Uh, but, I mean, how would you have done it? I mean, 
what I just said. I would leave several hundred troops there. Yeah. I mean, they, they had the, the air base there. Um, but are you saying you saying that a hundred troops were all the difference between them being able to take over the retake the country or not retake the country? I don't think no, so. I, I I think it's a matter of supporting the the Afghan military and the police so that they could support themselves. I mean, they were obviously they, they are unable to do it on their own, and we we've, we've seen that in the past. Yeah. And I mean, one part of me says. Who cares? You know, they got to figure it out on their own. And the other part of me says, well, to, to just leave, that opens up Pandora's box for terrorism um, that could spread elsewhere. Where the last several years, we've had the Taliban um, kind of kept, you know, ISIS has been gone. And everybody's been kind of stable, so you know. It, it, yeah, but we still had a certain component of American uh, troops sure. getting killed over there. Well, yeah, but you but know. we we have that just with our base in in South Korea. There's always a chance that you're going to have a North Korean sniper. Do you think? You know? do, you, do you think that uh, I'm asking all of you this question? Do you think? They thought, the Taliban thought that all they had to do was wait the United States out and eventually yeah. we'd go home. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look at look at the way Osama bin Laden was. I mean, he didn't have a care in the world. The guy just waited everything out. And I mean... Well, he waited everything serious. out till we killed him. <laughs> but, well, yeah, right. you know. but, but the serious <laughs> point is <laughs> they are very patient people very much like the Vietnamese. Yeah. I mean, especially, I, I should say, the Viet Cong, because the Viet Cong lived among the South Vietnamese, and they were very patient, and they were the insurgents that helped the Yeah, North there was Vietnamese. a difference, though. There was a difference, though, between the Viet, the, the North Vietnamese, or the Viet Cong, and this situation, because to begin with, and this was something people didn't realize, you know, the as I said, the Vietnamese never really hated Americans, but they were just another invader, right. in a series of invaders. Uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh, okay, uh, based his constitution on our constitution. He was trained, he was taught in America, and he loved America. And what we did is we made him begin to hate us, is what we did, you know. Right, but what, what I was getting at, Alex, is the, the Viet Cong were patient as well as the North Vietnamese because they knew that there's no way that the United States would have won. Mm -hmm. I mean, goddamn, look at, look at what happened in Iwo Jima or any of the islands in the Pacific during World War II. They tunneled underneath, they lived in the rocks. Yeah. I mean, the Americans eventually became successful, but damn, I mean. Well, but, but the reason we couldn't win in Vietnam was because it wasn't our kind of war to fight. We didn't know how to fight that kind of war. Well, right, but that also patience. Yeah. These, people yeah. have, these people have dealt with the French, they've dealt with the Chinese, They've dealt with all sorts of people, and they've won. The Americans were just another one, and all we got to do is our guerrilla warfare right. and wait them out, and they'll get the fuck out too. And guess what happened? We got out. How and about same with the Taliban? How about you, Kevin? How you feeling about this? Well, <laughs> we got ourselves into it. We got to get ourselves out of it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's the whole problem, I mean, and I think it's not going to be easy. And <laughs> you know, yeah, I think we approached this the wrong way. Like we could have and probably should have gone into Afghanistan and Iraq and treated it like a peacekeeping operation, not a military one. So send our troops in there, coalition troops, and like we did 
like what we did with Cambodia after the you know the fall of um, the Khmer Rouge, and you know what we did, what the you know the uh, UN did in East Timor is go in there and go actually go in there and look at it, look at it diplomatically, not militarily, and go on, what do you need to empower yourselves to get rid of the Taliban? What do you need to improve your infrastructure, to improve the, the experiences of women in your country? What do you need? And let us give it to you. Not us walking there going, cool, we've kicked out the government, we've disbanded the army, great. Um, oh, well, we, we made every, <laughs> in, in, in Iraq, we made every mistake you could possibly make. We had an ambassador over there who, who completely got rid of the whole army. And then they went home, but they took their guns with them, okay? And that's what became the basis for the uh, the uh, uh, the caliphate. You know, they they oh, so a lot of them wound up in uh, in prison in jails. You know, in prison camps. And in those prison camps, they just kind of talked to each other. And here's what we're going to do when we get out of here. And we got all our guns. And this is what we're going to do. And it, it was we just fucked that whole thing up so terribly that there was no there wasn't going to be a good outcome there. You know? But it also seems like these people don't want to fight for their country either. Well, they seem like a bunch of people that want to sit around and wait for somebody to come help them. Well, do they agree? Yeah, My question is, people go in is, and help them. Yeah. they'll stand behind those people. Yeah, like us, until we start leaving, and then they're run like little pussies. Well, no, I just well, wonder is, is, what the issue with that one really comes down to after the fall of the collapse the dissolution of the ottoman empire in 1918 when france and britain just carved up in the middle east and they were building lines everywhere saying this is one country this is another country this is another country no regard to the ethnic local ethnic tribes so this is the reason why we've got this sectarian violence in iraq and afghanistan is because you've got sunnis and shiites and you know, all these other you know groups forced to have to work with each other when in the past they didn't have to. Well, does, it, wait, that, does Iran have the same problem, or are they just one sect, and that's it? They are predominantly one sect, but they've got yeah. this, they've got a similar yeah. problem. They also have a very militant. They're, they're no different than the Taliban. They're a very militant government, because the, but they also had an, an um, uprising from within. The, like the no, I, feel, I feel like I feel like they have some division, but their majority is 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 extremely militant and has just mm -hmm. been able to maybe. Well, the, Shi the, Shia, the Shia and the Sunni yeah. never got force. along, you know. But they've also yeah. built their military. And, and what has Afghanistan done with us sitting there? What have they done to build their military? Anything? What have we allowed them to do? Not that, that's more. probably the, that's the bigger problem. I mean, I mean, I've, I've spoken to a number of Afghan vets, you know, who were part of the, re the, re the training program. And they're like, they're underpaid. They're not paid well enough. Because a lot of Afghans' money comes from the drug trade, yeah. which we've stopped. And so basically, we go it's like cool. We're, and also, we're, we're forcing people who don't even speak the same language to fight with each other because there's 16 organized, like recognized languages in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and so they, they don't all speak Arabic. Some of them speak Pashto. Some of them speak uh, what's the other one? Urdai. You know, some of them speak Arabic. Some of them speak, you know, the, you know yeah. Hindi. It's one of those things like and it basically forced them all together. We've disbanded all of their senior military command and then retrained them instead of going. Oh, hang on! You guys already know how to control the army. You guys already have an army. Let's instruct your officers and instruct your NCOs on how to, you know, better, you know, help your communities. Now we'll send you all home, and then we'll just find whoever. And the problem is, is that with these NCOs, is yeah, great. You got someone who speaks Pashto. Great. Um, you're in charge of a group who speaks Arabic. Who comes, from a completely, who comes from a completely different tribe from a completely different region of the country yeah. and you're paid not a, a lower than what the Taliban pays you so why you want why do you want to fight for the country when, let me ask you, you this know, Ross you seem to know a lot about this where did that come from did you is it just a subject that you've enjoyed over the years or is it uh, is it something that you do in some way professionally I'm gonna see if I get uh, uh, there what? I can't uh, see it. The Australian War Memorial. The uh, Australian what? The Austra I work at the Australian War Memorial. Oh, okay. All right. And my current boss is the former Australian ambassador to Afghanistan, and my previous boss was the defense minister that committed Australian troops to Afghanistan. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have a lot of primary sources. You have a lot of people who taught you about <laughs> Afghanistan. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's, that's one of those wider why the problems well, is you know, it's I mean, we, a very complex problem. Our our problem is we usually go into places that are don't have anything in common with our culture, 
and then attempt to think that if we apply our culture to them, it's all going to work out. Huh? Well, I mean, we did the yeah. same thing. It, you, I, mean, yeah. uh, the I think, you know, if, you know, if you think you want to blame Biden for this or whatever, whatever, I, I don't really think you can, but, no. you know, I mean, either way, but I, I guess I think that in the end, it, this is not at all going to help, you know, the historical legacy of the, you know, George W. Bush presidency. I mean, listen, his foreign policy over the last, you know, two decades has now slowly but surely borne itself out to be not good. I mean, did we, did I don't we, know, maybe some people might think it's good. I'm just saying, look, this seems to be a bit of a mess, right? I mean, Iraq's not, you know, I don't know anybody that really goes to Iraq for, you know, vacation or anything, so... It's not, exactly it's not right. a vacation <laughs> spot. Now, no, let me so. ask you this, though, to all of you. Do you think that, for instance, we made a big mistake in getting un, un, getting Saddam Hussein out of there? That, yes. in fact, he was the one person that was, by his, by his you know, our, what can we call it, his iron-fisted rule, he was keeping the, those two groups of, uh, of, of adversaries, religious adversaries, away from each other and from hurting each other and that he kept that country in line and that we were yeah. better off having him in there keeping that whole the stability in that area going than, than saying oh well he's just a dictator we have to get rid of him yeah because like why have we gotten rid of the head of saudi arabia or the shah of iran or kim jong-un because there's no reason for, there's no reason why we need to get rid of them saddam was contained to saddam yeah. No, to Iraq. He well, was turning, he actually had his people on, constantly on, on edge with each other. But he made, I think, what? you know, even if you wanted to remove these people, so let's say we concede that point, the way that it went about happening was not the best way, probably. Mm -hmm. We should have found a different way. Now, I don't know that I can sit here and say, oh, I know exactly how we should have done it. Like we just talked about, it's very, very complicated. But I think it's pretty clear that going in and uh, hunting him down and hanging him was perhaps not the best way, right? I mean, you know, and, and same thing in Afghanistan. We basically threw a bunch of people out. We didn't really have a good what's next, you know? I mean, obviously our military can evacuate a group of people from a, a plot of land. I mean, sure we can. We have all the bombs and guns and troops and planes in the, in the, in the world. We can make you vacate your position anytime we want well, what we're well, doing what right what, yeah, what we're what we're doing right now is we're sending a thousand troops was it two thousand or a thousand troops over to something like that, afghanistan yeah. to Both get our, to get the americans and the people from the uh, the embassy out of there which means right. of course we're not going to have an embassy in afghanistan and it will right, be so, years, possibly centuries, before we ever have a relationship with so them what, again. That's what I was saying a minute ago. Was so what kind of foreign policy legacy really is that going to be for yeah. you know the Bush administration? Yeah. I mean, it's not you know right. It's not going to. I don't think it's going to look favorably yeah. upon him. You know, when the when yeah. we talked about this a couple weeks ago, when the next C-SPAN rankings come out, he's probably going to drop a couple of spots. You know? Yeah, I would say. I don't think he cares. Yeah, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, probably uh, how it's going to work out. If, uh, Jeff, any any thoughts on any of this? Jeff, you muted, Jeff. Oh, Jeff, you're muted. Uh, Jeff, the more yeah. and more I listen and think about this, yeah, there's no good solutions. <laughs> it's 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 just terrible. Anything and you do, you're going to be damned. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you got to get out of it yeah. and and cut your losses. Yeah. How, how about you, Alan? Any thoughts? I agree. I agree with Jeff. I think it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Get cut bait. Yep. And get the hell cut out of there. Cut bait and go. And if Afghanistan can't put up for themselves, yeah, I don't know. Uh, 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 we tried. Josh, you started this whole discussion. Does that sound pretty much like the answer is just get the hell out of there i mean it's what we've done i anyway. mean at this point that's probably what we're gonna have to do i mean the afghani people to me have not demonstrated enough will to yeah take some of this into their own hands 
Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I, I mean, it's a terrible position in a way because the aftermath of that is going to be some cruelty. I mean, it, it wasn't Vietnam. I mean, you know, I mean, but well, I don't also, know. What, also, but I, don't I heard, know what yeah. we can do. I heard tonight that part of the problem in Afghanistan and the reason why the 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 populace isn't rising up against the Taliban is because the uh, the uh, Afghani uh, hierarchy and the, the you know the people running the country are supposedly incredibly corrupt. Well, there's maybe that element, and then you know my thought has almost just been perhaps there are more Afghani's who are actually more supportive of the Taliban and their sort of religious theocracy based government than yeah. we thought. I mean, maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But it just seems like there obviously is because they don't seem to be putting up much resistance at all, right? At all. I mean... You, no, they're not, I mean, there's no there, resistance there. can't be there. a they, shortage of weapons and things of this nature. Well, in how many weeks? How I don't know. Maybe there is. How many weeks has it taken for them to take over almost two-thirds of that country? Not not many. A couple Just months. A, few, right? a couple of months at best. At best. No, it's not yeah. been very long. Yeah. I mean, they just don't seem to be putting up almost any kind of... I mean, listen, I, I don't know. This is just me. But if I thought <clears throat> that I was about to be taken over and basically forced back into a life of, <clears throat> you know, quasi-slavery or whatever, I mean, you think these people would be throwing rocks at these guys if they had to. I mean... Yeah, you know that yeah. they themselves would resort to guerrilla warfare for guerrilla warfare. You know, like we're gonna do what we've got to do. But I, I mean, I'm just not. I haven't seen it, so I wonder when if when we were there. Well, the, uh, I don't know. Patrick's got his hand up. Patrick. Now, it, it, and and to what Josh was saying, think about this. We've been there for roughly twenty years. Imagine being a child that has grown up in relative democracy, so to speak, with especially females, mm -hmm. with the ability to do pretty much what they want, still within Muslim law that you know, the Afghanis have, and now the Taliban, who are more of an extreme version, now their whole lives are changing. So for 20 years or 18 years or 16 years, these kids have grown up in a relatively free society, mm -hmm. and now it's changed. And like like Josh was saying, you would think they if they didn't have weapons, they'd be throwing rocks or something to try to maintain what they had. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 it's, it, I know it's strange of me to bring it up this way, but I kind of liken it to, I think that the part of the country they've taken over, the two-thirds they've taken over, is primarily wilderness and, you know, desert and mountains and things like that, okay? It's, it's the, um, uh, somewhat of the, the uh, outer regions of the, of the country that are heavily Islamic, all right? The city is probably not heavily Islamic. It's probably more, you know, a big city. But because of that, I kind of look like it's it's why Trump was so popular in in certain states in the South, you know, and people accepted that, uh, and and with it without question. And so I think the problem is, is the people that they've so far conquered, or the areas they've conquered, are areas that probably were very positive towards them for the most part. Uh, does that make sense? Yes, uh, Ross? Yeah. The other thing looking at that is, um, mm -hmm. you saw this during the Second World War, when um, the Allies would come and liberate a town, usually yeah. around the um, yeah. you know, Netherlands, is that everyone would come out and be like, yes, we're free, we're liberated, yay! But if the Allies were seen to have a defeat, all those flags disappeared. Yeah. So I don't think it's very much a case of that the, the Afghans aren't fighting because there are accounts of the Afghan National Army putting up ridiculous yeah. amounts of mm -hmm. pressure against the Taliban forces. It's also a case, of, a case of the local populace have seen what the Taliban have done to sympathizers for the, for the government. 
Like they they were like, I'm not going to say that I support the government because the last time someone did, they killed their entire family. So I'm not going mm. to. But no, look at the end, maybe maybe 10, 15 years, we might look at it and they'll say, oh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're those twenty year olds, you know, who are now growing up, realizing, hmm, remember when it was really good when the, when the, all the coalition was here? Yeah, let's get that back. Yeah. It won't happen right away, but it won't but, happen. But in it could years. it be? It could it be? Could it be the reason they're so effective is pure fear? You know, and well, then I'm sure that's. I mean, there were some people, for elements. instance, in this one town that I saw tonight, that there was a group of fourteen people that were resisting, that were shooting at them. So they rounded them up, shot them in the head. Yeah, that's, uh, you yeah. know. I mean, uh, there's that fear that if you rebel against uh, uh, the, the Taliban, they're going to take care of you in quick order. So, I mean, Alex, what? It's almost like the Romans. That's why they put. I think that's why they put uh, crucifixions up and they crucified them. Because that's what you do when you break the law. We're going to nail you to a cross. Well, it looks great. It also law. great. It's it's a really cool look for church iconography. Sure, so yeah. you know, it's a spectacle. <laughs> of feel like this is what happens if you cross us. We're going to nail you to the crucifix. Well, certainly speak. that was a good example of saying to people, "Okay, here are people that disagreed with us. Look what happened to them." You know. By the way, you know how people died from cru crucifixion. Was that the blood, Alex? How they died from it? Was it no? Was it blood or no? No. Dehydration. No. But you're close. Uh, uh, asphyxiation. Really? If you hold somebody up like this for yeah. a period of time, I'm, I've got my arms out, uh, and and hang them by that, uh, eventually they will their lungs will collapse, Ooh. and that's what killed them. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just being up on the cross and, you know, as you say, dying of dehydration. It was uh, it was asphyxiation. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. And as That's I say, thing, like, it looked really cool on a pendant. So, you know. <laughs> who said that joke, Alex? With the crucifix, remember? What? Oh, oh, who who was it that said that? Yeah, it was. Shit, it, gave it, me the it, tape no, it was. It was. It was a Bill Hicks, he who said, funny. "Do you really I mean, think that uh, um, uh, the Jackie O, if she came back, would like to see everybody wearing?" Little rifle pendants on them, you know. That's funny. It's. I mean, I, I know I shouldn't laugh, but it is funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, why, yeah. You know, like. So anyway, what else is happening in the news, folks? What, what's the big news item down in Aust down under? Oh yeah. Okay. COVID. Um, aside from aside from the pandemic and how the state governments are at war with each other on vaccine rollouts. Um, but now, you say they're at war with each other. What on whether they should give them or how they're going to do it? He did. Um, so, the federal government organizes X number of thousands or million doses to be delivered to Australia, and yeah. then the states are, you know, will have been arguing with each other that their state deserves more of that percentage of the vaccine. I see. But isn't there enough va vaccine to go no. around? I know there was a time here. Yeah. When we didn't have enough to go around, and now we've got enough to go around that we're sending it over to other countries to help them. Australia banked very heavily on the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, we oh can produce boy. it locally, oh and it's no longer considered the you know the the, pro, the, tro, the chosen vaccine. Yeah. So, and because of that, all the Pfizer and Moderna, which comes online next month, uh, we had to import from it. You know, we couldn't produce locally at the time. So we were then prioritizing Pfizer to specific groups. And then basically in order to deal with this various um, pay, you know, lockdown, the pandemics is they're thrusting AstraZeneca back at people going, yeah, you can take this one, you can take this one, you can take this one. And people were like, I don't want that one. I want Pfizer, I want Moderna. I want the ones that have been proven to not kill me. Yeah. And because of, and because of that, they're basically, so, or, or, so the states, because for them, New South Wales currently has a massive lockdown. I've been going on for seven weeks. Now, have you been va want, have you been vaccinated? I am not eligible yet. You're not mm -hmm. eligible yet. I'm 34. I'm not eligible to be vaccinated yet. Young. Wow. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. So Ross, what part of Australia are you in? Canberra. A regional south, southern region of New South Wales. So I'm like an hour now north of Canberra. South Wales, uh, New South Wales. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I have friends of mine in Sydney that are in their 70s and they were waiting for the Pfizer too 
because a lot of the problem with AZ or AstraZeneca was in older people, and uh, they just decided they're going to go ahead and get the AZ mm -hmm. vaccine yesterday. They can't wait. Um, the the the, uh, the AstraZeneca is obviously a better choice than COVID, and uh, yeah, Pfizer and Moderna mm -hmm. are better choices. But if your country doesn't have them. What are you going to do? Well, it's kind of like uh, certain people I know went out and got the Johnson & Johnson here when there was a, not a lot available of other stuff. So, you know, you do that. You know, you take what's best out there. According to the CDC, less than 20% of the people in our country have got the Johnson & Johnson. Less than 20%? Yeah, my friend uh, Larry Bubbles that, Brown got the... the news yesterday. Larry Bubbles, Bubbles Brown got Browns. the Johnson & Johnson. He's the only person I know of. They got the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, I know, only know one person also. Yeah, yeah. Like the problem with our rollout though is that we're still very much like how you guys were at the start, where you know category one A, category one B. But yep. I don't know whether or not you, they're you, relying on dates or on, or on percentage of the people who are eligible in those groups get vaccinated. Yeah, but because, you you would seem that for instance with all that we went through, that the lesson should have been learned, and Australia should say, well, here's how we should do it. Right. But we we banked on the fact that no one could come here, and that was what we what we relied on probably way too much. Is that we actually stopped mm -hmm. listening to what the advice? So how is the how about. if if nobody's being allowed into Australia? How the hell does the uh, does the uh, uh, what do you call it virus? The new virus get through? Train Delta. ships, um, Delta. Like, all our all of our stuff still relies on shipping trade. Uh, repatriated Australians coming from other countries, politicians. Diplomats, they still have to, you know, there are people who still are allowed to travel yeah, um, with exemption, and it's come in through one of our quarantine systems. Well, you'd think they'd be putting a needle in their arm before they before they left to go anywhere and or, or when they were coming back. You know? If it was if available. If I recall, the reason why in Sydney it's got so bad, the Delta variant, was someone, there was a repatriation flight from either India or Europe, one of the two, and they were asymptomatic. They were in hotel quarantine and then they spread it to someone else who was in hotel quarantine mm -hmm. who left and then that's how it got into the community well you know it, it seems to me is that uh, uh, you have a you have a positive in this and you have a negative one is you're an island that's a positive because you can keep anybody out you don't want to have come in on mm -hmm. the other hand the negative is it's an island and if you get it it's going to run rampant and has nowhere to go but throughout the population am i the right advantage we do have is that there's it's one australian to every four miles yeah so we have, that, we have that going for us you have that how going. is new zealand doing <laughs> they have zero delta cases yes right wow. yep and i think yep. they have they're, they're your closest big neighbor right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think they also, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, in the very beginning were very low as well. Yes, just all the way around because they it attacked it immediately and took right. took Lock, measures. Lockdowns. Yeah. Yep. Australia and New Zealand were the first two countries to suspend flights from China and from Europe, and then from the United States. Okay. And New Zealand has basically said, if you're not already in New Zealand, we don't want you here. Well, right. you see, that's it was a brief travel bubble between Australia and New Zealand, but when the first Delta cases appeared in Sydney, Queen, New Zealand said, no, that's it, no more. Wow. You know, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna answer this. What? You know, that's, that's ingenious what he just said, because I wonder, we should have probably did that. You got a week to get back home, get everybody back where they're supposed to be. We should have just stopped all flights. Well, we made it, with, first of all, the big mistake was, is that our president said, no more flights from China. Well, that wasn't where it was going to come from. It came into New York from Europe because it had already invaded Europe. And the president didn't do anything to stop flights from Europe. Uh, and, and so consequently, New York, I mean, I, I can't tell you what it was like here, but I remember it. 900 people a day were dying. 900. We haven't seen anything like that since, you know. But all these other countries stop stop people from coming in. We should have just locked down the states. But you got to get back in once, like give it like a two week period, whatever it would have been. Well, yeah, the say, problem okay, was the it. problem was uh, Tony that we didn't have. We you got to remember during all this, we didn't have a vaccine, 
And so once you got people back in here, yeah, they're here, but they may have already gotten it. There's no way to kind of prevent them from coming down with it. No, you still would have sprayed, but you would, but still having the flights going back and forth, it would have stopped people from. Well, we did stop. We did stop a lot of it from coming through. What you needed to add was a quarantine once they got back, and that's what we did. We had we had we have islands that surround us, and I think I mentioned this last time I was on, um, where all the repatriated Australians. Was we spent two weeks on an island, off the mm-hmm. coast, and if they were sick, we were then we, we treated them. But if they showed zero signs, they were allowed to reintegrate with the rest of the community. Um, and then we. Uh, but how did how did you them. once they were on those islands? How did you separate them while they were there? I, individual like quarantine shelters, like, like they're, they're, yeah. There was a lot of FIFO camps for mines and things like that on these islands. Boy, uh, uh, Jeff, what's the population? of uh, Australian people. Right 26 now. million. Yeah. yeah. How many? 26 million. That's 26. about, if I'm not mistaken, that's about California, 10 million. Uh, Oakland 10, has a larger population. 10 million more than New York City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right. There's 2.3 million, I think, in Queens alone. Huh? Yeah. And a geographical I, country the size of continental United States. Yeah. I think when I was there, there was only 16 million. Yeah. Yeah, which was well, you're an old guy. A what long time ago. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, when I was a boy, there were only 16 million people in Australia. Yes, Alan. So one thing that that's in consideration here that they haven't got up to speed in Australia yet is uh, the people that are getting very sick are not dying like they were last year because we've learned how to treat some of them. A lot of people don't need to be intubated because they've learned how to do what they call high flow oxygen masks. Uh, Monoclonal antibodies are big here. Uh, Dexamethasone is big here. Um, uh, What's the, uh, the, you mentioned it the other day, I can't think of the name of the- Remdesivir. 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 Yeah. Yeah, and so we're using a lot of those in the really sick people and they're coming out of the hospital. Not all, not all, but- Rand Rand Paul owns a lot of that Remdesivir stock. Oh, well, yeah. what a loser. Sadly, the Australians who are dying now are, are elderly who don't want to get vaccinated, and they're staying at home because mm-hmm. they're from cult- ethnically diverse groups who have a mistrust of government officials. And a lot of them are like, from, re- from yeah, They're called Republicans here. <laughs> so what happens is that they, get, that they will get sick and they will stay at home, I, and then I, they will I, die I, at I home. I got to disagree and, with Alan. No, they're not called Republicans. They're called politicians. Okay. Well, a lot of a lot of people that. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, okay. I, I'm sick and tired of throwing everything at the feet of the Republicans when I see that the Democrats are really fucked up too. You know. Uh, am I right or wrong on that one, Kevin? Would you agree or disagree with me? Mm. That it's you know it's it's all politicians. I think you're you're fine. We you're can... muted, Kevin. All right, is he? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch all that. I'm sorry. No, I we were I, we were just saying that I you know he said well here we call them Republicans and it's Republicans blah blah, blah. and I said it's all it's just politicians. It's not Republican. The Democrats are if you look at them just as terrible. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure, Patrick, you probably agree with my statement, right? You know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, Democrats will make it make it look that way, but it's not that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, de- Democrats, I mean, especially... Democrats are like, they love to make it look like they're holier than thou, which yeah. they are now. And in the process, they eat their own, which we saw exercised in the last couple of weeks. By the way, did you see that uh, Andrew Cuomo? Uh, um, I, I don't. Uh, and, and by the way, I am referred now because I defended Mario Cuomo as a Cuomo sexual. What? So, uh, no, it, but but the point is that uh, Cuomo, uh, they're not going to impeach him. Oh. So he can so he can be New York's next city mayor oh he could be the next mayor or i hope he goes out for schumer's spot i hope he go or or kirsten gillibrand 
I think both oh. those people should be, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Or or maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know. Yeah. You're familiar with this situation, aren't you, Ross, or are you not, of our governor I'm here in aware, New York? I am aware of enough to say that what, well, what we hear about it, we hear, we, we have like a very dismal amount that we hear to America. Yeah. Um, I am aware of it, and I thought he resigned. He did resign. Yeah. And that's he, about as far as, and as far as Australia is concerned, that's all that we need to That's all that matters, he resigned, yeah. and that was it. But, <laughs> but you know the whole controversy that exists. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. What was, your, because, hmm? what was your take on it, Josh? Now that they're going to, uh, they're not going to uh, impeach him. Oh, did you send me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, that's probably the right thing to do. I mean, look, he's, you know, he got himself into that mess, and now he's going to resign. Mm -hmm. Going to get a new governor. You're going to get a clean break. Yeah. I mean, impeaching him is probably not gonna accomplish a lot i mean if they really feel that strongly that you know he should never be able to hold office you know they can pursue that avenue but i i don't you know really know that it's necessary i mean i think the voters should still have some good sense in that i mean right i i think really you should reserve that maybe for some you know serious felonies crimes things of that nature and like you said he's never really been accused of you know beating a woman over the head and holding her down and, you know, raping her. I mean, and again, don't everybody get fucking crazy. I didn't say, you know, well, all I did was grab her tits, so, you know, it's okay. I'm just saying, do they want to spend a lot of time? Well, I mean, he's out. You know, they, they got what they wanted. I mean, maybe sometimes we should move on instead of always trying to make it. Well, yeah, I wish, crack, people, I wish it, you know? people would move on, but I think what has bothered me the greatest in all of this is turning on the late night TV shows and seeing them making jokes about it, you know, and and attempting to humiliate him. Hey, everything he went through was humiliating enough as it was, and he resigned. Let him just go. I mean, you that's don't kind have of what to, I'm saying is, it's, yeah. look, I, I never really was a big supporter of him. I mean, you know, and, and those things. So I'm, I I don't I didn't defend him or anything like that. So I'm I'm not like sticking up for everything. I'm Listen, just saying, I wasn't a big defender you know, of him. So he, he lost. They yeah. won. But, but I wasn't uh, a big defend. I wasn't a big defender of him. So much so that my neurologist once asked me who the governor of the state of New York was, and I didn't know. Okay, <laughs> that's how much I cared about Andrew Cuomo. Uh, but once the COVID thing happened, he did such a good job at taking care of it and giving the pep talks and he was on TV every day and he was telling people wear the mask do the do what you got to do let's and he literally took the curve and uh, with the help of New Yorkers bent it in the other direction and I you know I will never forget what he did for this state during that period of time especially when we had a national administration that was going in the opposite direction and trying to defeat all the work that could be done to try and stop this thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, he he, he lost and, you know, they, I, I don't know if I should say they, I mean, you know, a, a lot of groups that were pretty hell-bent against him, they got what they wanted, he resigned. I mean, I think that more and more politicians who do this are starting to slowly get held you know, more accountable, but it is slowly because there are still some who refuse, you know, to leave and people are not forcing them out. So that's, that's the, the, mm -hmm. the cost of our democracy here, you know, is people like Matt Gates, people like Donald Trump can be accused of just as bad as what Cuomo did or perhaps worse. I think, you know, in the case of maybe Gates or whatever, and you know, they're allowed to stay. Well, what, um, uh, uh, you, know, you know, to, to even equate him to Matt Gates, I mean, you know, uh, none of the things he was accused of rose above a misdemeanor. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I don't know how long an impeachment would take in the state of New York. And oh, hey, well, it would, let me put it this lost. way it would take a it's while and it would be expensive. Okay. I mean, it probably would, and to me, it's like he left. Okay, mm -hmm. he's he left. 
He's disgraced. Right. He's probably not going to be able to run for anything else. Could you guys maybe like pave a fucking road or something? You know, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's it's I think it's time that we allowed him to just leave. You know, yeah, he I mean, he yeah. he quit. He did what you wanted him to do, and and now, but don't don't suddenly start dancing on the grave. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, 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 that's unseen. And, and you know, I mean, look, and and you know, he's he's gone, and you're going to get a new governor, and it's a woman, and that's going to make a lot of people happy. And oh yeah, we're getting a skirt. I we're mean, getting a chick. You know, a lot of people are yeah. getting what they want here. So yeah, and you know, a lot of them are probably right. Yeah. So it's fine. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I don't know that it needs to be pursued. You know. By the way, she's going to be the first female governor ever for the state of New York. Right. So, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't see this situation the same as maybe I did or other people did, the, the situation with Trump. Who I wanted to bring on I this program. Trump pro- was a yeah. danger to society. <laughs> who, I <laughs> I mean, want, I who I wanted to bring on this program was a guy I became friends with years ago. And I, I sent him a text, but he didn't get back to me. And I just don't, you know, at this time, don't know if it's even the same phone number anymore. It got mm-hmm. delivered, but I didn't get a reply back. And that's David Patterson. Who took over from Spitzer when Spitzer was was disgraced, and uh, uh, he became governor. And I wanted to do an interview with him, really, and not so much asking him what he thought of the whole thing with uh, with Cuomo, but what it's like to have to take over as governor from a governor who was largely liked, who got disgraced. Right, right, right. Up until you, you know, point and and and, was- and 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 what what that's like because everybody's sitting there with their arms folded going okay show us you know mm-hmm. now he had i think something like three years four years or something uh three years as governor because they got rid of spitzer in about a year so he had at least three years she's only going to have about a year then in no doubt she'll run for governor you know uh, sounds like it yeah yeah but uh, hey, we'll see. Yeah. But you know, I like I said, I I didn't see this. Don't see this is, is you know, yeah. Like the the Trump the second impeachment and the talk about barring him from office and everything. I mean, yeah. You know, look, I like I said, I saw Trump. Still see Trump as someone who 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 is pretty dangerous. And we didn't, you know, we didn't even go down that right. avenue with him. So if 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 we can't even you know go down that sort of avenue with. Uh, well, in case I'm ever asked, I guess, I guess we tried, you know, but I mean, I, I but I still don't see. Okay, it. but if I'm asked by any of my neurologist who's the governor of the state of New York, who am I going to say? Come on, people, anybody know? <laughs> ah, huh? Yeah, yes. Like so, a, so. a flash card or something. Her name is Hochul, I think, isn't it? Isn't it, Jeff? Yeah. Nobody still knows Como. here, yeah, right? huh? Still Como. It's well, well still Como, right? Until yeah. until a week from Monday. And uh, uh, say uh, uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a hokel. Close is that, enough. Is that how it's pronounced, hokel? Something like that. Anyway, so she's going to be governor, and I hope that you know that she keeps the same kind of attitude with regards to COVID that Cuomo did. I mean, he was yeah. he was pretty consistent in it. And and we need that to keep happening, because the 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 uh, the death rate is going up again in New York. It was 14 today, so not uh, not good, you know. But it's terrible. How's it doing in California? Anybody know? How's what doing in California? Uh, the death rate. Oh, I don't know. Where the positivity rate in San Francisco has dropped from 6.5. At the start of the Delta thing, down to five and a half. Yeah. Uh, okay. Five, five point five. Well. Five point, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me get this right. I'm looking at a chart here. Five point zero <laughs> five today. Yeah. So the rate's going down now that people are masking up and getting shots. I okay, guess. Okay, but what's the death rate in California? They don't yeah. list these death rates anymore. They used to have the death rate on the screen all the time, every yeah, day. Yeah, I don't know. You know. And they don't anymore. I know we're around 606,000 nationally. Yeah, well, in San Francisco, the head of the uh, San Francisco Zuckerberg Hospital said 
they're not at capacity yet and don't anticipate being. Is it called the Zuckerberg Hospital? No, it's called the San Francisco Zuckerberg or Zuckerberg San Francisco. Um, That's a general, yeah. SF General, yeah, it's FF General, but it's got Zuckerberg's yeah, name. Zuckerberg's there. name on it. Oh, yeah. really? Oh. Well, he, he put 150 million into it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but you know, you could have the taste not to put your name on it. You know? That's yeah, that's not his style. <laughs> you know, I mean, what? What, I, what do you want it to say, Alex Bennett? Sam they're Francisco. starting to. Uh, aren't they starting to uh, require? vaccination proof now indoors is in San Francisco as well yes yeah they're gonna they're 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 talking about doing it 100% bars restaurants everything yeah, yeah well I got my passport right here absolutely probably all, all of us have crap. except for but do you, except do you for have Austin. do you have these in uh, in California yeah so California has about? one something like Three, four it four weeks yeah here. Hold on a second. Let me. Well, we if you can go to if you go to the California website, we California Department of Health, you yep. can get a, a pass like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I've got one. It sounds like. Uh, you know where you can't get one? Florida. You know where else? Don't need it. Texas. Don't need it. Why do we need it, uh, Kevin? Don't need it. <laughs> Texas. You don't need shit. Yeah. It's against the law. You know, know they said. They, it, but... they said. They, uh, what? It's, I said we never discussed it, but at some point we're going to have to sort of address the hypocrisy around how important it is for your local governments to make decisions and how important it is for your local school boards to run your local schools. And it should be between your teacher and your child and your local school district and all that. But then when that local school district does exactly that and decides on a mask mandate, you have a governor who decides, no, no, they, they can't do that. That's mm -hmm. that's that's. Yeah, That's that brings up another subject. I'm a little pissed off about my daughter went and started school, and I was told by the principal during the summer that we got all kinds of COVID money, and we we're going to hire more teachers, and we're going to have smaller classes. And my daughter went to a school, and there's ten more people in every class. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much. So, but, you know, and and my, <laughs> my my thinking there is, we don't even really need to discuss whether or not. You should be wearing masks or any of that. I'm saying it comes down to a simple form of, you know, uh, exercise of powers and how these, that exercise of power has been decried for decades now by conservatives, and now suddenly they feel the need to use. They're engaged right. in it. I mean, because it right. was something that they didn't agree with suddenly. I mean, they, it, it's an incredibly hypocritical stance, and we didn't really talk about it, but you could go it's on forever flipped. about it. It's yeah, a joke. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah. That's what you think. That's what you think. Yeah, exactly. Let the school boards decide. Well, we've certainly had a lot to talk about tonight. And uh, it all started because uh, we had uh, Ross Manuel call us, call us from Australia uh, and, uh, and, and tell us what was going on there. One thing led to another. And then we suddenly found out he was an expert in Afghani politics. Anyway, mm. that's good, too. Anyway, th I got to get the theme song going here. I got to thank uh, Josh. Oh, yes, Jeff, you have something you want to say? I'm going to be in Massachusetts for the whole week. Oh, really? Hope I can survive. Okay. When? Next week, I guess. Oh, next, next week. week. Yeah. Yeah, I have to pay. Well, try to call us from there. I will. Okay. Uh, Josh, thank you so much for calling, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Ross, uh, please do it more often. I know it's a time change over there and it's a little difficult, but when you get a chance, uh -huh. we love hearing from you, okay? Much uh -huh. appreciated. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you to our good friend Patrick Blazik and to Kevin. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. And uh, this little private thing we do. And of course, Alan, thank you. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel, and they're gone. And um, we'll be back again, uh, uh, let's see here, on Monday uh, at, uh, at 4 o'clock with our little pop-up show that we do, which is kind of fun and nice, okay? Uh, 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 Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. And uh, he will be here, and he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll be back again at this time 
next Tuesday at 10.30 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And please, get vaccinated, okay? Bye.